What's up guys, welcome to my channel. My goal is to have the perfect 112 version of each of my favorite characters. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 112 Cyber Knight Floating Shadow for copyright reasons, also known as the Arkham Knight Batman by Extreme Toys. So way back when this figure was announced, I noticed that the color scheme of the suit seemed to be completely inverted, black for silver, and it looked a little bit off, so I made an edit of what I thought it should look like, and actually got in contact with VC Toys Box, who was able to contact Extreme Toys, and lo and behold, they ended up changing the final product. I can't say for sure if that was based off of my edit alone, but it happened. So first of all, I've modified the box to be a little bit more space efficient. I do this with pretty much every figure that I get. I feel like most of the time boxes are way too big. You can keep the accessories in a little plastic bag like this, and it's much easier to store them. And here is the Arkham Knight Batman out of the package in all his glory. Taking a look at all those awesome little details that go into the suit. Here are some of his accessories, at least the ones that I've chosen to hold on to and that I will use. Here is a closer look at his battering and the alternate grimacing head sculpt. And let's take a moment just to appreciate all of the intricate little details that go into this suit. This isn't my all time favorite bat suit, but you can't deny that when the light hits this just right, especially in the rain in the game, it just really, really looks cool, it stands out. Here's the cape. I'll go into more detail on how I did this cape later. One of the few physical modifications that I made to this figure was to cut the collar. So I cut the collar along this line and then I slotted the top of the collar back into the collar. So you get kind of this layered effect here and it's glued here at the back. I also added some masking tape so that the head could fit on a little bit better. It was a little loose before. Next, I cut off the excess trap armor. There was kind of a second layer beyond what you see here and someone on Instagram pointed out that that was inaccurate, so I cut that off. Now you may be looking at these shoulder pads and wondering how I was able to paint this little carbon fiber texture onto them, and the answer is I didn't. Isaac Customs on Instagram did this amazing upgrade to his Extreme Toys Batman, and one of the first things that stood out to me was the shoulder pads, and I asked him how he was able to get that printing onto them and he was kind enough to reveal his secrets to me and he gave me a lot of tips and advice and he also told me where you can get these shoulder pads. These actually come from the DC Collectibles Batman Arkham Knight, which I was able to pick up on eBay for about 20 bucks. Impressive! You've upgraded your armor! I've made some upgrades of my own! Now, the original shoulder pads are connected via magnets, but I decided to Go for these elastic straps, which I picked up on Etsy, made a little loop so they are free floating and you can adjust them however you want and they won't fall off. Another thing that won't fall off is this bat symbol. Now originally you can swap this out for the gold prestige symbol, but because it kept falling off because I swapped out the cape and everything kind of bulged out a little bit more, I decided to glue that in place. I also repainted all of the abdomen armor as you can see, tried to match the color of the suit and then I used some other reference pictures, some custom versions of the Hot Toys. And I took away the silver dry brushing on the gauntlets and some other areas like the boots and the hands. And then I repainted them. So I depainted them and then repainted them. Now the knee pads come as separate pieces. They're optional. I decided to glue them on and I also repainted them to try to match the color of the suit. I just think they look a little bit better and they also don't inhibit the articulation. They work just fine. The boots are kind of the same situation as the gauntlets. I took away the paint by using some clear nail polish and wiping away the silver dry brush, especially at the back. But I tried to leave a little bit of the dry brushing in key areas where the armor should be weathered so I didn't have to weather it after taking away the paint. So you can see I took more off of the toe of the boot than off of the armor. I also took away the silver dry brushing on the soles of the boots. Now the clear nail polish that I used was just some really cheap stuff from Walmart and you just lay it on there and wipe it off as quickly as you can. And a lot of the areas that I wiped away the silver dry brushing I ended up painting them anyway so it was kind of a moot point 
But one area where I would still do it if I were to do this again would be the hands and the gauntlets and the boots, especially the hands because if I were to just paint them, it would risk scratching off the paint and revealing the silver underneath. Now I had originally done that exact same method for the head, but I wasn't happy with the finish, so I decided to just repaint everything. And I used a mixture of black, silver, matte black, gloss black to get this kind of semi-gloss, dark gunmetal color. And I experimented with kind of adding some different finishes in different parts of the mask just to accentuate that it's made of a bunch of different pieces. And then I just repeated that process for the alternate head sculpt and I also repainted the faces. So this flesh tone here I did with a mixture of red, yellow, blue, and white. And then I did the sideshow method of adding different washes, red, yellow, and blue. I use Vallejo model color paints because they're kind of the only one available at Hobby Lobby. So Batman definitely looks the part, but how well can he pose? Well, his arms can move out all the way to the side, which helps with flying poses. They can move forward quite a bit, enough to drive the Batmobile, but any more and you might risk damaging the suit. The biceps can go up to 90 degrees. They can move a little past it, but the suit pushes them back. You also get a pretty good amount of shift in the shoulders, so you can make him shrug his shoulders and put them up higher. I tend to keep them a little bit lower and shift the shoulder pads up. You also get some swivel out of the head and a decent amount of tilt actually, so you can get some attitude, you can make him look up. You can't make him look down very much due to the nature of the collar, but the neck is kind of a separate piece and it's on its own ball joint, so you can get some motion out of that if you work at it. So all in all, a decent amount of motion and not as inhibited as you might think. The ab crunch, however, is pretty much non-existent. All of this is mostly coming from the hips. And that's just due to the nature of this armor. It's all one piece and it's connected at the back and at the belt, so you're not gonna get a whole lot of motion. The hips can move up a little bit. You can get him kind of stepping forward, but you can't get him into a good sitting position. The suit just restricts that. You can get him back a little bit. The knees, surprisingly, can move way past 90, so they're one of the best points of articulation. The ankles, you can get some rotation and some swivel out of that. And you can easily remove all of the armor bits, so the boots and the gauntlets are all made out of this kind of pliable rubber, and they're not glued in place. So you can take all of those off. If you feel like they're not put on correctly, you can totally adjust those yourself. This cape is originally from Muff Toys, and I've cut these little sections out to make it look more Arkham Knight style. The original cape has this fold, and I separated it enough to get a wire in there, but the fold kind of tapers off as you go up, so I had to make the wire go out of that little fold and cover that up by gluing this part here together. And then the cape kind of goes here and is held in place by the armor, and you get some decent posing out of it. The wire isn't super strong, and the cape kind of is a little bit heavier but you can get it into some decent flying positions as I'll show you at the end of the video. Here he is next to my custom soap studio, Dark Knight. As you can see, he stands quite a bit taller. This makes me really excited for the upcoming Manipal BVS Batman and the Mezco The Batman. It'll be really fun to have all of those different representations together. Here he is next to the SHF Wonder Woman, the Comic Cave Iron Man Mark 46, And here is Batman and Spider-Man, a couple modern interpretations of the most popular characters from their respective franchises. And I think it's worth noting that my custom is not the perfect 112 Arkham Knight Batman. I think Podong on Instagram has taken that spot. Go check him out. So yeah, I could spend the time to sculpt out his chest a little bit more and get a better custom head sculpt, but as an addition to my growing Batverse, I think he serves his purpose really well and I'm really pleased with how he came out.